Welcome to this video series for people who are new to Postman. In this video, we'll take a look at how to write your first API tests in Postman. If you missed any of the previous videos, make sure to check the video description for the full playlist. Before we jump into writing tests, let's first clarify what API testing is. So far, we have done API testing without realizing it. We have built requests and submitted them to the API. So, for example, previously, we have created here a new repository. We have inspected the response body and the status code to determine if our API call was successful. This is a very basic form of testing. We have manually tested if the API works. Quite often, we don't want to repeat this process all the time, especially if we are in charge of making sure that the API is working properly. With Postman, we can write a bit of code that automatically checks if all criteria we deem as relevant have been fulfilled. As soon as we have multiple requests, it is really time consuming and prone to errors to manually inspect every request and every response. What if I told you that Postman could check 100 endpoints in just 10 seconds or something like that? This is why we need to learn about this. So let's move forward and write some simple tests in Postman. Postman allows us to do both manual testing, but allows us to automate the process and the first step is to write a test. You don't need to be scared of this, I assure you it is quite easy to get started. To create the first test in this create repository request, I will go here to tests. And you will see here on the right hand side this snippets. So you can open and close this panel with snippets from here. And as a beginner, it's great to use the snippets as you can easily get started writing some tests. So I'm going to select here a snippet that says status code, code is 200. And what will this do is to create this code here. And what you see here is JavaScript code containing a test. But inside here, inside the test tab, you can write any JavaScript code or any functionality that is required for your request. So what we have here is a Postman test. And we are using the pm.test function. And this function takes two parameters. The first one is the name of the test, which is status code is 200. And the second one is a so-called callback function, which contains the assertions. And if you look at the assertions, you will see it says here, pm.responds to have status 200. This test will be executed once the response from the server has been received. As you can observe, we are making an assertion on the response using the pm object. Let's run this and see what happens. Now you will see here that we are getting a status code 422. And we get here in the body some details why the request failed. But most importantly, you should take a look here at the test results. And you will see here we have something which says status is 200. Expected response to have status code 200 but got 422. Our assertion was that the status should be 200, but we got something else. And then this code has been executed by Postman and the test failed. It is very important to ensure that your tests will fail. If you're getting a test that passes from the beginning, make sure you change something about your request to ensure that your test will fail. A common mistake that people in the beginning do is to write this code on their own. And what they tend to do is to put here a parenthesis. By closing this function, they also remove something from here. The test almost looks the same as before. And then they get here a test that passes. The reason for this is that in JavaScript, this is still valid code, but essentially the pm.test function contains no assertions. If there are no assertions, obviously the test will pass because there's nothing that will make it fail. So it's a common beginner mistake. So to make sure that you're not making this mistake, always ensure that your tests will fail. So I'm going to revert this and make sure that it still fails. And move on to trying to fix this. So we'll see here that the error that we're getting is that name already exists on this account. So essentially, we have created here a repository created from Postman. But in this case, we can only create a repository with this name. So if we want to create an additional repository, we need to change something about the name, otherwise you cannot have two repositories with the exact same name. So I'm gonna simply add here number two, so created from Postman number two. 
you see this is still failing. And as you remember, when creating data, most of the time we'll get 201. 201 is also something indicating success. But in this case, indicating that the resource has been successfully created. So we also have to change our test. I'm going to change the name of the test. So status code is 201, but also the assertion itself, which as you can see, is easy to read. PM that responds to have status 201. So just to make sure that this will not fail again, I'm going to change here to create it from postman number three. And now our test is passing. And as we know, the request itself has been successful. So it seems that everything is working properly. Now, just testing for the status code may not be enough because a status code 200 or 201 can come from different directions. It doesn't necessarily ensure that what we have created is what we actually wanted. So, for example, maybe the name of the repository is not what we expected. Maybe the description that we have provided has been totally ignored, for example. So, let's find a way to try to test some properties that we get back from the response. So, in this case, we have provided this description. So let's check in the response to see if this description is also available. So we'll be able to see it here as well. So that's totally fine. So we can go ahead and write a test for this to ensure that the description we have provided is the same description that we've got back. So for this, I'm going to go here again to tests. And this time I'm going to select a different snippet. I'm going to select the snippet here, response body, JSON value check. So in this case, we want to check if the description is available. And there's also some code that Postman has generated for us. Now, the first step is to get the response as an object. So you will see here, response data, this will contain the response. Now the response is in JSON, but you cannot work directly with JSON. We need to transform it into a JavaScript object. So that JavaScript object will be a representation of the response and it will contain the exact same properties you see in the response. Now, after this, we are writing an expectation. So we are expecting that something from this object, from the JSON data object, equals a specific value. So for example, I'm just going to run it as you see it right now. And you will see that again, I'm getting a different error. Essentially, the first test is still failing but because we haven't changed the name of the repository. And the second assertion is also failing because we have expected undefined to deeply equal 100. Now, undefined simply means that there is no property value in the response. So even in this case, if we're looking here in the response, we'll see there's no property called value. So whenever a property is not found, for JavaScript, this means undefined. So essentially, this here is undefined and we expect undefined to equal 100. So this is definitely not what we wanted. So let's go ahead and try to fix this. I'm gonna create here, create it from Postman number four. I'm gonna go to the tests. And if you recall correctly, uh, the property that we wanted to use was called description. We are testing if JSON data.description equals, let's check the value that we wanted to have. So this is the value and it's going to be between quotes. So I'm going to replace here 100, which is a number with this string. So now we have this. So let's go ahead and submit this request once again to see if our tests are working. So you'll see here, test status, everything is passing. So both tests that we have with these two assertions, they are passing. And now we have successfully checked that the status is 201, so that the repository has been successfully created, and that the description that we have provided is also available in the API. Of course, you can take a look at the response that you're getting and make assertions on other properties as well. As you can probably notice, there's something really annoying about this request, and that is the fact that we need to change the body all the time to be able to resubmit this request. And at this point, I wanted to introduce you the concept of dynamic data. So hard-coded data like this one does not work so well for this scenario. We can provide a description and to have that description all the time, but the name of the repository needs to change all the time. For that reason, we need to make it somehow dynamic. And there's the possibility of using variables inside here. We can define Postman variable, we can auto-generate it, and we can go ahead and insert it here. 
So let me show you how that works. We want to create a variable in Postman. We can do this from the collection itself, but that will still be a static value. But we can also create variables from scripts. So in order to create a variable before the request has been executed, we have to do this in the pre-request script. So as the name implies, this is something that happens before the request has been executed. If we would write it in the tests, that would be too late and the request will no longer have that value. So I'm going to go here in the pre-request script and I'm going to use the PM API for scripting. And I'm going to write here something like PM.collection variables. You'll see this autocomplete appears. Set. Now we're setting a variable. And it's very important that you don't confuse set with get. And the set a variable. And here we specify two arguments. We specify, for example, the name of the variable. Let's call it repository name. And then we can specify a value. I'm going to simply put something hard coded test value so that you can see how it's working. We'll take an incremental approach and make sure not to write too much code without understanding what that code does and if it works properly. In order to be able to use this variable, we're going to copy the name, go to the body, and we're going to replace what we have here and going to make sure that we keep the quotes at the beginning and at the end. I'm going to write here curly brackets. So two curly brackets, then the name of the variable. I'm going to close this and you will see here the syntax will also change. So when I'm going to click on this and run it, you will see here that the name of the repository is now test value. So what happened? This script was executed. We have created a collection variable called repository name. We have given here a value and we have used that value in the body here. At this point, this is still not a dynamic, so it's not really helpful. It doesn't solve our problem. Let's try to add some randomness to it. So I'm going to go ahead and define another variable. I'm going to use const to define the variable because this is something that doesn't change. It's constant at this point when the script is executed. I'm going to call it random. And I'm going to use a built-in JavaScript function which allows us to generate a random string. Now, it's totally fine at this stage. If you don't understand what this does, you simply have to note that this is generating something random and then we can use it somewhere. We're going to use it here, for example, to define another variable. And these are all JavaScript variables. They have nothing to do with the Postman variables. So this will be only available here. You cannot use them in your request without using something like PM collection variables that set. So don't confuse JavaScript variables with Postman variables. And let's say, for example, we're going to define here a variable which is called repository name. And we're going to create here a string which says here my repository. And we can also add this random value here. I'm going to add the random value that was generated here. So we're creating a new string and we're passing this to the pm.collection variables that set. And when you're doing this, make sure you don't do this. If you do this, this is just a string. So when, it, when something is between double quotes or single quotes, this is a string. It's not referencing this variable we have defined here. If you do this, we'll only get a value repository name. But if you remove these quotes, this will be replaced with a variable we have defined here. I'm going to click here again on send. And you will see now what we're getting back is something like my repository and then this is this random string so now i can go ahead click a few times on this and i can start generating as many repositories as i wish because all the time i'm going to get some random data there now we have written a test for the description but we have no test for the repository the name itself so let's go back to the tests i'm going to copy this previous test and make some small adaptations to it I'm going to check here if the repository title or name has been properly created. And again, we're going to take a look at the body. We're going to take the name property. So JSON data dot name. And we want to make sure that it equals 
the repository value. So we want to just make sure that it's the same value as this variable. So I'm going to copy it and I'll go to tests, replace this hard-coded value with this one. And if we're looking at the test, we'll see that this is failing. So we're expecting my repository with some random data to deeply equal this thing. And as you can see, the curly brackets were not replaced. And the reason for that is this syntax with curly brackets does not work inside scripts. You can use it inside the address, you can use it in query parameters, in the authorization, in the body, anywhere else, but not in scripts. Whenever you need to get a Postman variable inside scripts, and remove this, including the quotes, we have to use pm.collection variables for getting a collection variable. Dot get, it's important not to confuse get with set. I'm gonna specify here the name. And I'm gonna make sure that we specify the name without curly brackets. So we are getting the value of the repository name. And this is still failing. As you can see, GitHub is replacing our spaces with dashes. And while these two may look pretty similar, they're not technically the same. So in order to ensure that this is working properly, I'm gonna use here a built-in string function, which is called replace all. And replace all has two parameters. What are we replacing? We're replacing a space. So this is just an empty space and we're replacing it with a dash. Let's give it another try. And now this is working properly. So in this video, we have replaced manual checks with tests by writing assertions. We have here different assertions. We're checking the status code and we're checking some properties from the response body. And now we're sending this request once. We only have to look here at the test results. If everything has passed, it means that everything has worked properly. We no longer need to check the body or do anything else. Additionally, we have also documented the API functionality at the time of this test. So for example, something that this API does is replacing these spaces with a dash. So this is again documented in our test. If all of a the sudden they start not doing this anymore, this test will fail because it will then have a different value. So this is what I mean by documenting the API functionality. If you're facing any issues getting this to work in Postman, make sure to check the video description for some troubleshooting ideas.